You're listening to Witch Wednesdays, your weekly podcast source for all things witchcraft in the modern world. Welcome back to Witch Wednesdays. I'm Steph, and I have a guest here with me today to chat about a very interesting topic, something that's never really been covered and I think is really unique to her practice. So I am going to go ahead and let her introduce herself and let you know where you can find her online. My name is Citrine Fox, and I identify as a like psychic music witch, and you can find me on citrinefoxtarot.podcast, and that is on Instagram, or I also have an email that's citrinefoxtarot at um, gmail.com. And I also have a little podcast of me reading tarot called Citrine Fox Tarot. So that's it. I love it. All right. Yes. Let's get into the sort of what your practice is like, because it is very, first of all, you have a lot of moving parts. You do a lot of different things. Um, sure. And then what you specialize in is like totally unique and different. So I would love to chat about sort of like all the different things that you do. Okay, Sure. Um, see if I can think of it all. So I, <laughs> <laughs> my daily practice is I, I read tarot for myself um, and like I'll either do a spread or I'll just pull a couple of cards. Um, and then I also play piano. So I try to do that every day. It doesn't always happen, but I also connect with my instrument um, for, for making magic happen. So yeah, I mean, those are the main things. Um, I also have done some, not official work, but some work with mediumship, and I've been a psychic person forever, and just kind of realized that that is witchcraft about eight months ago, so <laughs> um, not even putting those two together for a long time, but yes, <laughs> that's it, I think. So how do you you use I think the main topic we're going to chat about today is how you particularly use the piano in your craft because we have like sort of briefly touched on that on the podcast before about using music and like witchcraft like together and that being like a big part of it for some people um but I've never had an episode solely dedicated to it and even amongst witches who use music in that way I don't think are as maybe specific as how you use the piano so I'd love to just jump into that whole topic (laughs) Yeah, absolutely. I um, mean, we, if we have to go down to the piano, I can. Let's see. So I use the piano. I kind of work. I have three pianos and I mostly work with one of them and I kind of teach on the other and the other one is new. Um, and so I really haven't gotten to know that spirit yet. But um, so when I meet a piano for the first time, I and that sounds crazy, but that's what it is. Um so that's not that's not crazy at all I think a lot of people feel that way about yeah their their instruments because it's like yeah and musicians just like feel that way it's it's a very personal attachment you have there right so when I meet one for the first time I kind of like sit there with it and I feel kind of its energy and you can kind of feel if it's going to vibe with you or not um like some of them are like yes play me and some of them are like "Mm, no um and so the ones that I have One of them I got for free, and um, I probably wouldn't have picked it, but the one that I do love, I have a Wurlitzer Baby Grand, and I picked it, I resonated with it right away, so it kind of communicates with me, and then eventually, over time, I kind of get to know the spirit, and they reveal their name to me, so my piano is called Francesca, and she is 90 years old next year, so she's much older than me and she kind of has this really old spirit yeah so she sounds like an old piano yeah I kind of love that it's a little bit of a lighter sound kind of it's not as warm and rich as like a Yamaha or something but just kind of like I don't know it sounds really good kind of fairy like almost in the high notes so that's my piano and I I also, I don't know enough about this, but I feel like there must be some sort of connection to the type of wood used with the spirit too, because it seems much older than 90. So it's a walnut, but I don't have enough green witch background to know what that means. But anyway, um, yeah, that's how I met the piano. So how do you use then the 
piano and like to sort of work with it in your craft and you know we're gonna go into you playing a song of course but how do you sort of use that then in energetic cleansing and your spells um as far as your home your family your neighborhood yes thank you okay so I um I will select repertoire based on what I feel is needed um there's a couple songs that I frequently play um and it has to do with like what I feel the frequencies are in it. So let's see, like I think of like, if it's associating with chakras, like I think of like WC and Chopin and stuff is like this really high chakras, like the um, the crown chakra and the third eye chakra and, and stuff like that. It seems to really cleanse things like headaches and stuff for me, just because it's really high. Um, and a lot of it just sounds like, and I can't even make that sound. <laughs> um, so if you want me to, I can go play it just a little notes, but, um, and so that's kind of what I use that for. And then I want to do some like healing for the community. Um, I'll open my windows and just, I'll tell the piano what I want it to do. So I'm like, we are going to be cleansing this house with the element of air and we are going to be cleansing the neighborhood and providing like a sense of peace and calm. And so then I'll, I'll open the window and I'll play something in like the higher frequencies of the piano with like the really sonorant sounds. And then I'm trying to think, so during COVID I would play this song and I think it's actually Christmas, no Christmas, Christian song, but um, that doesn't matter. It's so fun to play. Um, so it's called, it is well with my soul. I don't know if you know it. I probably do. Probably. If yeah. I heard it, it's, I'd probably be like, yeah, yeah. you probably <laughs> would. Um, but I played it a lot during COVID because I'm like, I need to send this like wellness out to anyone who can like experience it. So I try to make it so that it is spreading throughout the neighborhood, whether they hear it or not. Um, if anything, like vibrations can spread. Um, that kind of message. And the hope the hope is that they feel better. They don't need to know why, but just that people feel better and feel healthier. So with that piece, it was mostly kind of like the middle tones of the piano and some bass tones. Um, and so that one was like kind of like grounding and cleansing like the the chest area, like what was affected by COVID. Um, so that's what I was specifically targeting there and then I also use like the lower notes to really target the the root chakra and the sacral chakra chakra and stuff like that so yeah that's kind of what I do so I kind of will analyze a piece and be like this is like this and this is like this and this is like this so I just kind of do it by int intuition but also based on the frequencies yeah did that help yeah, that sounds really beautiful and interesting. And I know a lot of people don't work as much in their practice with sound. We've talked about briefly about bells and how bells are associated with the air element, but really have never done a dive into all of the different ways that music and why it is associated with that air element. So I love this take. And I think it's like one of the senses that people really forget about um, when they are doing witchcraft. Yeah, totally. I feel like I connect with it easier because, okay, this is my hypothesis, but I'm an Aquarius sun sign and I'm, I'm really an Aquarius. So I'm <laughs> often very, very in the like airy, like um, headspace and it's really hard for me. Well, I can do it. I'm getting better, but um, at like grounding and connecting to my body. And so the piano also helps with that. I found because if you've ever played a big piano um, and maybe just because mine is older too, you can feel more of the vibration, but you can actually sense a vibration coming up from your feet, um, especially if you're using the pedal and you can sense it coming up, up through your arms and fingers. And so it all just kind of connects at the center, if that makes sense. It does. It does. I've okay. never played a small piano before so I feel like maybe I need to I have 
the exact opposite of everything that you mentioned. Um, I have sure. a, Yamaha, a Yamaha grand piano. That's like gorgeous. That, that, I mean, it is gorgeous. <laughs> yes. <laughs> My parents got that, uh, I think shortly after I was born. So it is probably, you know, some, sometime in the eighties it's from right. maybe, maybe late seventies. So it's not, you know, super old or anything like that. And we've had that forever, but it's like the exact opposite sort of, <laughs> of what you're talking about. Right. Um, yeah. But I am familiar, you know, at least with like the pedal and the vibrations and things, but I can just imagine how much more pronounced that is on a smaller piano. So maybe I should try right. playing one one day. That might be really interesting to see. Yeah. My little baby grand, it's the smallest kind of baby grand that they make. It's, I think it's 50 inches by 50 inches. So it's pretty little, but it's got a, it packs a punch. Um, But yeah, I wonder about that. Like you think that if it's a longer piano, like an eight foot or something, then it would probably be able to absorb some of that by itself and you wouldn't get quite as much of it. But I like that sensory input. (laughs) It feels really good. And I don't know. Yeah. Okay. So the thing I was going to talk about with that too was, oh, I don't remember exactly what it's called, but I had this parasensory experience that a lot of musicians have actually, but not all, um, where if you are hearing a sound, you'll kind of experience it somewhat in your mind's eye as something. Um, I don't remember the name. I might have to look. Oh yeah. I know. I know what you're talking about. And I, the name is on the tip of my tongue and I know that listeners are going to be like yelling right now. (laughs) I'm sure someone knows what it is. Yeah. If somebody knows, definitely. I'm sure everybody's going to let us know. They're like, it's this. (laughs) Yeah. But it's really interesting because I'll do things that I'll say things to my students. And I always thought everyone was like this because that was my experience. But I'm like, well, um, it didn't sound like a D because it's, um, it's, it didn't sound very green, <laughs> it didn't sound very triangular, and they're like, what? So I don't have perfect pitch, but I sometimes can hear like some of those notes, like our D is always green and a kind of pointy <laughs> and things like that. And like C is a little more square and orange yes. and, and things like, so when I explain that to my sister, she's like, I've never thought about that because I um. I never have, but I realized that what else would be a green triangle other than a D? <laughs> so I know I know that people um, experience this, and I think they all experience this differently. But yeah, and yeah, intervals absolutely. too. I hear as shapes kind of like seconds and thirds are more like squares. Well, seconds are more like something else. I don't know <laughs> a shape that isn't real. Um, yeah, that's so interesting. interesting. And I think that is, oh gosh, it's going to drive me crazy to not remember that word right now. But we'll figure it out. Maybe I'll figure it out after I like post this and I'll put it in like the show notes. You're like, you thought of it, guys. Uh, but I have heard of that before. I don't have it to like that extent. But like if I hear a song, I will associate it with a color. But I think that yes. might be like more familiar to people. Like if you hear like a very, you know, dark slow song that might be like a black or purple and if you hear like a yeah. sort of like rage song that's a red like that's kind of totally something that people would understand yeah. but like yours is even more broken down that's beautiful <laughs> kind of is um yeah so even in a general sense like that if you're wanting to um do chakra based work then you can work with the colors um or healing work with colors kind of like you do with candles or really anything so I imagine you could even do like money spells with it, but I've never thought of that before right now. Um, well, I guess you yeah. have your, your next project to try out. Right, <laughs> exactly. Right. So that's interesting. I actually had never put it quite together to that extent. So thank you. I bet you could. That like sounds fun. Like a, a whole new world. But I do think that people are most familiar with using music to cleanse. But mm-hmm. I, yeah, I definitely don't see why you couldn't use it for a bunch of different spells and just changing the music totally. that you're using to go with that, which, yeah, I think is incredibly fascinating because I know that that's something that I'm guilty of is not using the air element and not using my sense of sound when it comes to my spell work. Those are both things that I am lacking in. And I think it would be really interesting to be able to bring those both in like a little bit more. Yeah. And you play. So that makes it even more of an easy transition if you feel like exploring that. So you teach as well? I do. Oh, I don't exactly. teach. I don't teach um the witchy stuff of it. Um, I just have, just have, piano. Yeah. <laughs> I will sometimes like my teaching piano. Um, 
is a, a little upright that I have. Um, and they, so they play on that one and it's, it's fine. It just sounds kind of like a, a normal piano. There's nothing too special about it. Um, but I will, I have a little altar on there all the time. They don't really know what it is, but there's an altar on my teaching piano and it's oh. there to kind of help them, um, you know, associate the piano with good things. And like, I'll tell the piano before lessons, if I remember to like your job today is to like help to heal the students and help to give them joy and help them to release. And yeah, so I think I oh, told you it. in one of the emails um, about my, my student who, um, so she was playing this piece and she played it. She suddenly went from like an intermediate student to like an advanced student in one day. And it was really cool because she wow. started playing um, just at a different level. She was just started connecting to the piano and she was playing my, my Wurlitzer. So the grand, I let the bigger kids play on that one. Cause I know they're got, not going to beat it up. Um, <laughs> but, but yeah, so she was playing it and she was like, wow. And she got done with playing the song and I was literally in tears because a couple minutes before her lesson, I was I had been having this really horrible day. And I was like, I need to cleanse. Like, I need to cleanse my chakras. Something is off, like, especially in, like, my chest area. So I really need to, to deal with that. And so I, like, I did a quick candle spell for that before my students came in. And then she came in and she played this piece. And I cried. <laughs> and I'm not usually a big crier, but it just, like, released everything. And so she did it. <laughs> so I thought that was really cool. Like she she did the magic Aww. without knowing it. So that was awesome. And also afterwards, she's like, oh my goodness. I just felt like there was like these roots coming out of my feet and into the piano. And like my hands were connected to the piano and the whole world and the universe was inside of me. And I was like, <laughs> oh, <laughs> Oh, so, she, she's, oh, she's a baby witch. I know. It was <laughs> so great. I was like, oh, I can't tell you too much, but yes, you're very right. <laughs> <laughs> That's so exciting. That's like peak yeah. of teaching right there. <laughs> oh, it was wonderful. And ever since then, she played it just at another level because she connected to the instrument that day. It was so cool. It's so cool when that happens. Oh, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> How fun. No, yes, at the moment, I didn't handle it very well. I was just crying <laughs> and crying and trying to get it under control. And she's like, I'm so sorry. And I'm like, no, no, please don't know. be sorry. <laughs> the best day oh, ever. So oh. sweet. Now, since you are also all the other, went to at the beginning, a uh, psychic and a medium, do yes. you, you think that your piano playing attracts um spirits like your music does it attract like spirits or animals or anything like that um so it will sometimes I feel okay so I know that spirits can pass through walls but I feel like especially if you if I open the window I'll get a lot more come in and they just kind of sit around me or like on top of the piano and I can just kind of sense them there um and it'll be people I know who've passed or people who I don't even know or possibly even animals like one time I was playing and I felt a cat and I looked down and there was not a cat um I do have a cat but it it was across the room so I could <laughs> I knew it wasn't that cat not that so <laughs> yeah so I don't know I also work with Bastet who's a cat goddess so it could be her or or a little ghost <laughs> but it really it felt soft and it kind of purred and it rubbed on my feet while I was playing oh, cute. And, yeah so those kind of crazy things happen um but yeah, the other things that'll happen is I'll like, I'll sometimes like talk to the spirits around me and they'll like give me a message of what to play to help with whatever I'm feeling. Cause I usually get drawn to the piano in moments of crisis. <laughs> so like they kind of help me figure out what to play to cleanse it. Like I'll get a message. It's like that it is well with my soul one comes up a lot. Either they like it or they want me to do it, but yeah kind of interesting and but yeah I think it also just kind of opens up your mind a little bit when you're playing because you're not really thinking I mean you are but it's it's different like you're kind of in the moment and you're not thinking like this isn't real like that doesn't really pop into your head when you're playing 
So right, yeah. <laughs> just experience stuff. So yeah. is it your, so your goddess, Besta, uh, yes. music is one of her domains, right? I don't know that much about Besta. Yes. I have a whole episode on Besta if you want to learn about it, and that probably only covered part of it. Oh, um, yes, I'm definitely going to find that. <laughs> right. That's well, so she's interesting. like 10,000 or something years old, so they just keep... I feel like those goddesses have a lot going on, but um, I feel like she's easiest to describe as she's kind of like a mixture of like um, Aphrodite and like Hestia and a little bit feistier too, but she's not a dark goddess. Um, Not technically, but she has a, a sister who is a very wrathful goddess and sometimes they are considered the same, um, but yeah, so she's interesting. But yeah, she definitely does work with music. And I have little statues of cats all over my house. Um, so they, I just kind of like tell them that they're bastard and they, and they can like help me with whatever. She's also a, a goddess of protection of the home and like women's health and parenthood and things like that. So she helps me with that too and teaching. Oh, yeah, covers like a whole whole lot of things yeah so yeah that's kind of how that started um I just kind of fell in love with her so I was gonna yeah. I was gonna ask what came first the piano and the cat or the goddess oh, definitely okay. oh I don't know I think probably the piano and the cat because what happened a couple of years ago before so I only started knowing I was practicing witchcraft um like a year ago and oh, I was wow. like, oh, it just oh like, that's what that's like, called. Oh, this, this suddenly all makes sense. <laughs> right, exactly. I'm like, I've been doing this forever. Not not like candle magic and stuff. Like I started that at that time. But like the the stuff that I actually do day to day, um, I've been doing for a long time. And the, the tarot is also new to me, relatively. But yeah, so um, I always have seen spirits. And I always have played piano and had weird thing, visions when I play piano and like, experiences like that or I'll I remember like looking up during a track meet once in high school and it was raining and I saw this like little patch of sun and I was like that will be during my race and that happened and just like things like that forever happened and so I've always kind of been a witch and not had the word so no that's that's Sorry. exciting to be able to like figure that all out and put it all together and kind of have everything right. come full circle like that yeah so that's when I started listening to your podcast and I've listened to every episode. Oh, thanks. Subscribed. So <laughs> I think you're one of the first ones I started listening to. Oh, that's exciting. Yay. Yeah. I'm so glad. I'm glad you've been listening all the time. And I'm glad it's been helpful. <laughs> totally. Totally. You are very knowledgeable. And I'm really excited that you were willing to come on and chat about this because like I said it's something that I haven't covered you know you've listened to all of the episodes uh that I haven't covered and I think is really unique and music in witchcraft is just not talked about enough and obviously not something I specialize in so it's really exciting to hear about all of this from you so thank you for sure yeah. oh I remembered your your question was whether Bast at the goddess came first or um piano and spirits came first and I think piano came first but I've always been really drawn to cats and I saw her in like the sixth grade unit that we studied um Egyptian like ancient Egyptian stuff and I was totally into that like way into it and thought everyone else was too I don't know if they were or not um, but I saw a picture of her in one of the textbooks and I like really wanted to know more about her and I kept asking people and no one knew anything other than she's the cat goddess and it's just so much more than that so I kind of tabled it because I couldn't get any any information and years later like just cats started popping up everywhere and I kept buying cat statues and putting them in my house and eventually ended up with a Bastet statue. And then I had to figure out who she was. And then I did research and everything kind of became this practice, but yeah. So she was like kind of always there in the background, just waiting. Kinda, until you were ready. Yeah, exactly. At least since like about sixth grade. Very, very excited. I love that way. When you're like that age and you just find something and it totally speaks to you and you think everybody else is as in love with it as you are, but they're yep. usually not. <laughs> <laughs> totally true. Age. 
I'm totally, I'm, I'm even guilty of that now where like I find a new thing and I'm like, okay, I love this. So everybody loves it. And I'm going to talk their ears off about it. And it's never the case. Yeah. <laughs> That's my whole life. Just ask oh, my yeah. husband. He's like, no one else cares. <laughs> I think that he does listen like, at least. Yeah. Yeah. I'm really good at them. I think our switches have that in common where we yeah, like totally. find a new topic under witchcraft and we just do a deep dive. We're so invested. And we think everybody else is too. And they're like, no, we're really not. <laughs> totally that's why it's great to have this community <laughs> like, yes kind of definitely to chat with. totally I've been noticing though I now I think I see witches everywhere but I don't think that they all actually are so I have to be a little careful and not be like hi I'm a witch are you a witch so <laughs> kind of learned that the community online <laughs> is almost deceivingly large <laughs> compared yeah. to in, in my little town <laughs> that's true it's like much easier to find people online and people are able to be more honest because you can protect your personality and like your pictures a little bit um, yes and so it's, it's just easier to to find that community online than it is in person totally agree well the last thing that we were going to do is to have you actually play on the episode so this is very exciting okay. because absolutely nobody has played before <laughs> on an episode okay we'll see what happens the very first um so very excited about that so let's first tell the listeners what it is that you're going to play sure so I am going to play Claire de Lune by Debussy I think most people are familiar at least once they start hearing it I'm sure they'll know because it's on like every relaxation playlist ever made but um I think it's really good for cleansing, especially the really upper stuff, um, like depression, anxiety, things like that, um, headaches. So that's what I play it for. Um, but usually I'll just like tell my piano to do that. So should I do that? Yes, let's okay. do it. <laughs> sure. So I'm just sitting on my bench and I just like hold the sides of the piano and I just tell it what to do. So, okay, hi Francesca. Your job today is to project project out to the airwaves, healing, cleansing, especially of the upper chakras, but also to ground, because there's some of that too. And this really does range everything, but I'm specifically targeting that. And she says, okay.
that was absolutely beautiful. Thank you so much for sharing that and sharing that piece of your practice, because that is like, you know, a piece of your soul going out there to the, all the listeners. So that's huge. Thank you. And listeners, that is everything that we have for this week. So I'm going to have everything linked in case you want to connect or have any additional questions about music, piano in witchcraft. And if you can think about the word that we were trying to think of, where you can hear the, see the music in your mind as a color or a shape, um, let us know what the word is for that because we are very curious now. Yes. <laughs> That's everything that I have for it. Need even more? Subscribe to Patreon and YouTube for exclusive bonus content. Order a themed witchcraft box every month through Witch Wednesdays on Etsy. Be sure to follow on Instagram at Witch Wednesdays Podcast. Find all these links and more at witchwednesdays.com.